Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we'll be going over a market neutral strategy and how to go about optimizing the weights for this type of portfolio. So we'll start off by requiring tickers that we want to use. I'll include SPY for a benchmark, but my actual portfolio will consist of TLT, EEM for emerging markets, and VUG for a growth ETF. I'll send these to a new environment by requiring get symbols. And for this back test, I'll start off from 2005 until present. So I'll go ahead and run these lines. Next, I will combine these by extracting the adjusted closes. So I'll use do call, merge, E apply. So now we have the adjusted closes, but we need returns for this optimization. So we'll use ROC and type is discrete. We'll round that to four decimal places. And if there's any A's, we'll replace those with zero. And finally, just change the column names by dropping the adjusted and just keeping the ticker names. All right, so I'm going to split the data for this back test. So for the back test, I'm going to extract SPY, including the returns up to 2015. Same thing for our portfolio. Which includes VUG, EEM, and TLT. Up to 2015. And then whatever weights I get for this back test, I'm going to apply it looking forward. So this will be my benchmark for the walk forward analysis. So that includes 2016 until present. And then my returns for my portfolio will be the tickers in my portfolio. starting from 2016 until present. So we'll run these lines. So for this optimization, I want to minimize beta, but if we take a look at a histogram, beta is calculated by using the daily returns. But for beta, which is kind of a risk indicator, it includes the upside for the returns, but I only want to compare the downside of the returns. So I want to minimize the downside return risk, but keep the upside. Performance Analytics has a good beta function called Kappa Beta Bear, which we'll use for our optimization, and we'll try and set that equal to zero. So in essence, we want our daily risk to be close to zero as possible. So we'll set our optimization function here, call it to optim, by passing in the weights. So our portfolio will be core data
over x1. And we'll multiply those by our weights that we're passing through. And then our objective will be Kathum Beta Bear. Our risky asset will be our portfolio. Our benchmark is going to be SPY1 for the back test. Risk free rate, I'll set that equal to zero. And I'll set our objective as close to zero as possible. And then we'll add a weight penalty so that the sum of the weights does not surpass 150. And I'm using leverage, as you can see, so 150% of our allocated capital. So whatever you want this target weighing to be, you can change it. Or for standardization, I'll just leave it at 150. So the sum of the absolute value of the weights should be as close to 150 as possible. And then I want to return the column sums of our portfolio, which are the returns plus the objective plus the weight penalty. So essentially this should be close to zero as possible this should be close to zero as possible. And then our returns, I set this equal to negative because I want to maximize the return of this portfolio. So I'll run this function. I'm also going to include another function that's going to round our weights to two decimal places. We'll run that. Now for optimization, I'm going to use DE optim. Our function is to optim. Our lower weights, you can change these to whatever minimum weights you want. So I don't want to allocate anything less than a negative 75% to any individual ETF. and my upper limit. I don't want to allocate anything over a positive 75% to any individual ETF. And then I'll add a control list so that my iteration max will be no more than a thousand iterations for this optimization. And then finally, I'm going to add that function that rounds my weights to two decimal places. So we'll go ahead and run this and see what we get. All right, so I'll pause this video here and then I'll continue when this is done running. All right, guys, so it looks like it's done running and we have found some optimal weights. So these are assigned by columns. So our results are to long BUG, 56% of our portfolio will make up that asset, negative 19% or shorting 19% of emerging markets and being long 75% of the TLT. The returns equal approximately 100%. So we'll go ahead and extract the weights by using our beta optum best mem which are the weights here i want to make sure that the sum of the weights do not go over 
our leverage. So if we sum the weights, we get 112 net, but if we use absolute values, we get 150, which was our target leverage. So 150% of our capital was allocated. So the following lines are for our back test results. So I'm going to copy this line. I'm going to replace this with as numeric, our beta optimum best MEM. Now I'm going to plot this against our benchmark. So I'm going to merge our benchmark with our portfolio. Geometric false. So it looks like our portfolio beat the benchmark overall, but not throughout the back test. But what is nice is that the downside risk was kept at a minimum. So back during the financial crisis, the benchmark suffered a loss of close to 50%, while our portfolio managed to keep it at approximately 20% of downside. So this is exactly what we're looking for for our market neutral strategy. But all is well for the back test. Let's take a look at the walk forward results. And we'll see if it managed to yield the same results for the walk forward. So I'm going to copy these lines, change RETS 1 to RETS 2 keeping the weights the same. Our benchmark is two, and then our portfolio is our walk forward portfolio. All right, so let's take a look. So overall, we get the same results. It beats overall, but not throughout. Also our drawdowns were kept relatively modest and no more than a 10% decline during the most recent crisis. So this is what we're looking for for a market neutral strategy. We want to make beta as close to zero as possible. And then you could tweak this round by playing with the weights of our lower limits and upper limits. If you want to change the tickers, you may do so by rerunning this and applying different tickers here. But just keep in mind that you are going to need a benchmark to calculate the beta. Alright guys, well let me know what you guys think. I hope that helped and I'll see you guys in the next video.